Hello everyone, Silent K here, and welcome back to the Yurokamp VR Tour series. This is where we take a look at all the real world locations from the anime series Yurokamp, right here in Google Earth VR. I've already covered Season 1 and the Heia Camp series, so check those out if you haven't seen them already. This is for Season 2, starting with Episode 1. Now, in Season 2 there's probably going to be some reruns. I'm not going to cover anything that's already been covered in the first season. You can go check out those videos if you want. But we have a lot of new stuff to cover, so let's get started. Alright. We're starting off at Rin's house, which I could not find during Season 1. They didn't really give enough context for it. I did know she lived somewhere near Kai Tokiwa Station or Ichinose Station. Because the school is near Kai Tokiwa and she doesn't take the buses, I mean the train as far as I know. And they showed a couple trips where she left this area. So I know she lived around here somewhere, but what I did not know is that her house is based on a restaurant that's in a different location than her house. So first we're going to check out the restaurant her house is based off of, which Kai Tokiwa Station is over here and the restaurant is right over here. So usually you see it from this side. And you can see the road curves the wrong way. This was a restaurant, actually, I should say. And if you look it up on Google Maps right now, you'll see some 2D photos where they have pictures in the window of the live action Eurocamp advertising its uh, influence. But yeah, this is not where she lives. This is just the building it was based off of. Now, her house is actually a follow 300, route 300, all the way to Furuseki and Japan Post, and it's up the road a little ways, but first we have some shots leading up to it. The first of which is right here on route 300 and route 401, I mean 404. All right, right around here, a little too far. All right, so we got the signs, the bridge on the left, the fence on the left, this little red box here. And the next shot is right around here, which this shot is really kind of weird. We got the little storage shed over here. We got the guardrail and this entire building has actually been swapped out for the bookstore Reen works at, which makes no sense whatsoever. They even have the umbrella in the bucket on the right. This is definitely not where Reen's bookstore is. <laughs> in one of the episodes where they first introduced the bookstore, she says that it's in this city right here. And I had to scour the city to find a bookstore. If it was right down the street from her, <laughs> She wouldn't have said it was in that city. She would have just said it was right down my street. So, I have no clue why they copied it there. One thing I do know is that this entire segment with Young Rin is an anime original. So, I don't know if they put it there by accident or if they were trying to make a reference or what. But it does not belong there. <laughs> now I have to find the street that I was on. Give me one second. But yeah, this is definitely the shot and also definitely not where the bookstore belongs. So just a little bit of trivia. Alright, and the next shot is at Reen's house, which we've seen many many times, but... but we did not know the location of before, and it's right here. This little shed here, curving off into the right. We got some trees, the on the right, there's usually a big rock here, but there is no big rock visible. There is a rock there, it's just overgrown. So yeah, restaurant here instead of the shed, Rean's house. Alright, and then there is an outro shot, which is back at the intersection facing the other way, on the bridge. Maybe a little more this way. You got the building in the front here, the little sign in front, the stairs with the railing. 
little tree on the left. Not quite as grown in as the anime version, but it'll get there. Nice, nice, very detailed shot. All right, and the next segment is Rin and her father going to Lake Motosu, which I'm not going to cover. I already covered that twice in season one. Then we join young Nadeshko in her old hometown, which again I've already covered. Then we see her going to her new delivery job, which is in Minobu at the post office. So I'm just going to punch it in, make it easier to find. Minobu post office, which is just north of Nanbu. All right, the post office is here. Nanbu is down that way. So, the first location is her riding to her morning route, which is around here somewhere. This one's really weird though, and I'll show you why. Alright, no, it's over here. All right, so we got the hedges leading into the stone wall and we have a multi-tiered stone wall here, as you can see here, and down the other side. But you might notice there's nothing really in the background here. We also have the fence on this side. If the green stuff was down, it would look pretty much the same. You have the straight bar and then the, the cables going along the top. But if we go down here and look at the hill from the bottom, now it looks a little more familiar. We got the blue house next to the yellowish house, but now the stone walls are too far away. So I don't know what's going on here. Either this ridge right here got terraformed to add stone walls and she was riding along like a closer road that they added or they took a bit of artistic license and moved the houses further back. I don't know. But this is definitely the spot. It's just a bit of a composite, I guess. All right, and then we see her making some deliveries, which is right down the road from the top road we were on. Right around the corner here. Yeah, right here. We got this yellowish house with a green tile roof. We got a doorway here. They added a mailbox. We got shutters next to some windows. We got the shrubbery. We got the two different sized stone walls. We even have little flower pots next to the telephone pole. It's hard to see in VR, but you can also see the brown railing fence. And they changed the buildings off in the distance, but not a big deal. And I could not find the next shot from here. She says she's going to Takano's house and then she turns this way. <coughs> Oh, excuse me, sir. Can you please stop that for just one minute? I'm going to be recording something. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. It will just be one minute. One minute. All right. So she turns around here to go to Takano's house or something. And there is a brown fence on raised concrete and a brick wall and shrubs, which there is nothing like that anywhere near here. I even checked the entire neighborhood just in case they got the shot from somewhere else and put it over here but there is nothing even close to that. Like we got a brick wall here, shrubs are on the wrong side of the street, but I could not even find two of the three components next to each other. So that one's a bust. All right, and from here we go back to the post office for our lunch break, which this is a pretty fancy looking post office. Got the rounded glass front. Pretty cool. And then I think they showed this area where like people were coming out of the employees and whatnot. 
And then next she has some lunch with Enna, right down the street here. I think it's right there, maybe one more. All right, so we got this pole here with the brown thing on it. With the sign on it. <laughs> the tree, the bank, the buildings in the distance. All matches up, looking very good. And then from here, Nadeshko goes out for her afternoon deliveries. And we see her crossing this bridge back to the same area we just were. And you can see the very square building on the left and this little green plaque thing in the bridge, the brown railings. All right. And from here, the girls start talking about what they're going to be doing for New Year's vacation. And we start with Enna, who says she's doing a shrine visit at Kwonji Temple, which we've already covered. But it's a different building. Before we were looking like this direction. And it showed a shot over here, so we'll check it out real quick. Alright. So we're looking at this building from a slight angle. Was that a 360 photo? All right, right about there. We got the white signs in the front. We got this green thing you can just see peeking over Chikawa's head. There's a lamp in the back with the signpost next to it. Very distinctive building. Very nice, very nice. All right, and next is Aoi, who says she's going to visit her family in Takayama. I could not find that one, but it was an interesting search, so we'll check it out. Takayama, well, they said Hida Takayama, so any of this area, massive area to check in. You might think there's not really much detail in it, the signs on the restaurants are actually kind of useless. They just say what the shop is, like soba. Not very useful for searching. But the actual useful information was on the sides, those little irrigation ditches. You can actually see those on the satellite photography. And even in a city this massive, there are only going to be a few of them. And they usually try to keep them out of the way of people. So you're not usually going to find them like right on a road like that. And when you do, they usually have like a railing. So I did comb this entire area looking for those irrigation ditches. And I followed them all the way up and down. But I could not find anything even close to that. Because it's going to have the irrigation ditches on both sides, which is really weird. And then there's only buildings on one side and a wall on the other. It was very, very distinctive for those features. So I was pretty sure I'd be able to find it. And I combed this place for hours. Just checking the same ones over and over again. Could not find it. I'm trying to find one as an example. <laughs> as you can see, there's not a lot of them. I did this in my browser, by the way. I did not sit here in VR for hours and hours looking through this. This is a little bit different. <laughs> all right, so here's an example. You can see on the left, the irrigation ditch with all the little steps on it for pedestrians to cross and whatnot. So yeah, this is probably the only road that has it on both sides. A lot of times it's covered up like this for safety. A lot of times it's just these little bridges and whatnot to get over. But I scoured both cities for roads like this. I could not find anything exactly like it. All right, next is Nadeshko's grandma's house near Lake Hamana. Lake Hamana, Hamamatsu. It is right near Nadeshko's old house. It is actually pretty massive. It's a mini ocean. This whole area is Lake Hamana. And down here is Nadeshko's old house. We don't know exactly where her house is, but they showed this bridge before. 
looking at Mount Fuji. I thought this one would take me a while, but I actually nailed it first shot. <laughs> and it should be right around here somewhere. Looks a little different in VR, but. All right, pretty much nailed it right here. We got a tree on the left, this pole with the stripes on the right, and the coast banking around. Nice, nice. All right, and from there, it's Lean's turn, and she starts talking about the trip she's going to take next. And she starts off by talking about Izu Peninsula, which is this entire thing right here. There we go, this guy. And the first location she talks about is watching a sunset, I mean a sunrise. And it shows a beach, which is Yugi Mahama Beach. And there were a few 360 photos around here. Alright, this isn't the prettiest 360 photo in the world. But this is the closest one to the screenshot that I could get. You can see the triple bumps on the coastline to the left. A couple bumps off in the distance, barely visible. And then you can just see the start of the one on the right. And this is Yumi Gahama Beach. They say the sunsets here are one of the best in the country. So it's no surprise they picked this location for Rin looking at a sunset. Sunrise, I keep saying sunset. Sunrise, this is the east. <laughs> Alright. But there were some better 360 photos. It's hard to tell the exact location, but I'll find them. Alright, there we go. A little more lively. Lean would be right at home here. Lots of tents. Some sort of inflatable playground out in the bay. Nice. All right, and next is Cape Mihama. All right, and we get a shot somewhere around here. Oh, here we go. There's a little observation deck right over here somewhere. Something like that. All right, and there's some 360 photos here. Actually, the first one I wanted to check out was like over the bay over here. Someone took like a drone photo that's really awesome. Yeah, that one. Nice. I am like a bird in the sky. Gorgeous. Alright, and there was one near the observation deck, which was actually over here. That was pretty good. There's actually a lot of them over here, but we'll just do one. Alright. They probably wanted a better picture of the sign, but this one was really high res, nice and bright and beautiful. Cape of Mihama. All right, and next, her father suggests the Nishizu skyline, which I thought was just going to be like the skyline of Nishizu, but it's actually the name of the highway up here. So once I realized that, it was pretty easy to find. So uh, Route 127. And right where Route 18 crosses over, it's going to be a little bit south of that. And we got headed to the west, so it should be right around here. There's like a parking spot and a red car. All right. 
Mount Fuji in the background. Oh, what's this? Someone beat me here? Sir, are you here to look at the real world locations of the anime Yoro Camp? No? Alright, you better not be. Otherwise I'll have to throw you off this mountain. Alright. So this is the shot. We got very distinctive dotted line patterns on the lines. And the A-shaped frame in the fence. And Mount Fuji you can't quite see. But there are 360 photos up here. So we will check one out. I've already picked it out. Make sure Mount Fuji, not that one. The yellow shirt guy, not very good. All right. Not quite visible, but it's one of the better shots I could find. Sir, ma'am, thank you for social distancing and wearing a mask. Very responsible of you. Not bad, not bad. All right, and next they do show a picture of Iwata campsite and Mitsuke Tenjin shrine, but Rin is obviously going to visit those in the next episode, so we'll cover it then. Next we have to actually start the trip. So we have to go all the way back to Dean's house. All right, so we're back at the intersection of 404 and 300, and we have an establishing shot. All right, a little harder to see in the dark, but we got the different types of guardrails and fence in the background. We got the red box, the yellow blocks here, the little red, the little blue building here. All right, and then pretty much the same shots as earlier, just in reverse. All right, you can see the little shed on the right with the building behind it, the shrubs on the left, diamonds in the road, and then we see her at the corner. You can see the signs in front, the mirror on the right, the guardrails in the back. And then from here, we are on our way to Nanbu. So coming down Route 300, the next shot is on this bridge. The shot is taken from out there, obviously, but we got this guardrail here and the arch top with the beams coming down. Mountains in the distance. All right, and from here, whoa, whoa. We're continuing down 300 south of Ichinose, south of Kai Tokiwa, and there is a railroad crossing somewhere along here. Right here, railroad crossing. All right, and of course we got all the railroad crossing paraphernalia. Big building in the back with the square windows. All right, and after that, a little curve in the road, a little bit to the south. Right over here, I think. All right, somewhere around here-ish. Maybe right there. All right, you can see the bridge in the background. You can see this triangle cut out in the tree line and you can barely see like a little walkway heading down to the left. Sort of like this one right here. Very, very dark, <laughs> but it's right around there. All right. And then from there, we are almost to Nanbu. 
We got the famous bridge that Nadeshko always crosses. Now that one. Now that one. This one? Yeah, that's Nadeshko's bridge. She lives over there somewhere. And first we have a shot like right up here-ish. Yeah, like right here. We got these brown railings here. We got a fence up there on the top of the wall. We got the river along here, the city in the distance. Nice, nice. And then the fateful encounter right here at the intersection going to Nadeshko's bridge. A little bit further up. We got the arrows on the street. We got some little banners on the left. We got this red and white sign straight ahead. And then right over here, of course. Whoops. The convenience store that Nadeshko comes out of. They replaced the D with a B. But same building. And then we wave goodbye to Reen going this direction. And you can see the street sign too. And there is a little outro shot like right over here. Yeah, like right here. We got the tower, the white building, this little open garage here. A lot of the cars are even the same. We got the white trucks in front here, the white cars over here, black car is missing. Blue truck is there in the back. It's all the same. Alright, and that covers episode one. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and share this among any year to camp communities you think might enjoy it. These videos are a lot of work. They take about a week to produce if there are a lot of locations to cover. So don't expect them immediately after an episode comes out, but they will get done. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Please tune in again next time.